Welcome everyone to a very special March Madness chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by the six Division I men's basketball coaches in the state of Mississippi. It has been a historic week in the state of Mississippi and these six coaches, these six schools, among many other athletics uh, representatives from schools across the state of Mississippi, as well as countless other lobbyists, did a wonderful thing and got the state legislature, the governor, to open their eyes to changing the state flag in the state of Mississippi. I'm pleased to be joined. I'm going to go around the horn here by Kermit Davis, the head coach of Ole Miss, Ben Howland, the head coach of Mississippi State, Lindsey Hunter, the head coach of Mississippi Valley State, Jay Ladner, the head coach of Southern Miss, Wayne Rent, the head coach of Jackson State, and Landon Bussey, the head coach of Alcorn State. Um, I'm going to go first to the natives of Mississippi because they've lived and breathed, the, breathed this uh, for a lot of their lives. And so I want to start with you, Kermit, um, a native of Leakesville, Mississippi. So growing up with this flag flying in countless, I'm sure, times in your life above you, what were your first thoughts about the state flag of Mississippi with the Confederate flag within it? It's never been right. You know, Andy, I was in the state, I think I was in the third or fourth grade when the schools were integrated. Uh, it's kind of funny, you know, my dad was on the 59 team uh, at Mississippi State that wasn't allowed to go to the NCAA tournament because there were black players in the tournament. So we've, you know, I've seen it obviously from a white man's perspective and not as a, as a black man growing up in Mississippi, which is different, uh, but it never felt right. And because uh, it didn't represent the citizens of our state. And so uh, it, it was a great day for all of us to come together uh, to kind of see a change that's been needed for a long, long time. Lindsay, you're from Utica, Mississippi. What about you? Well, growing up, uh, my father at a real early age taught me about, you know, all the different, uh, the racial differences and, and things like that. And born in Jackson, uh, raised in Jackson, going to a Jackson school, you know, living in Utica, we saw every facet of it. And, and uh, Kermit, no knock to you, but my father wouldn't even take the calls from Ole Miss because they had the flag up. You know, so there, was, there wasn't even an opportunity for me to go play at Ole Miss because my father was like, no, we're not even talking to them because of the flag. And, and when I understood, I'm like, wow, Dad, it, it means that much. And, you know, my family was big into reading, so they made me research and start learning about, you know, the different things that happen and, and what the flag meant to certain people. And, and it was just a divisive, always been a divisive thing in our state to me. And, um, I, I just frowned upon it. I love being from Mississippi, but that's one thing that I've always frowned upon and, and always was wondering how we could get rid of it. And I'm just so happy that we finally start making the right steps. Wayne, you're from Jackson and now the head coach of Jackson State. You know, it is like, you know, just like uh, Lindsay said, uh, growing up in Jackson, it, it was always there. It was always a problem. Uh, the people that you were around every day because they, they looked like we looked, uh, it, it became a topic of conversation all the time. And then, it, you know, it, it, it just went on for so long that sometimes you just got immune to it and you just, you know, it, it is what it is and that's the way it's going to be. And I think sometimes you accepted that. Uh, and, and then we, you know, fast forward and, and where we are today, you know, I think it's a, a giant, giant step in the right direction, you know, with all the coaches coming together to, to, to get changed. Jay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're from Picayune. Um, and, and went to Southern Miss. How about for you? Yeah, born in Picayune, uh, a little bit similar to Coach, Coach Davis. Both of our dads were high school coaches, and uh, I'm a little bit younger, although Kermit's holding his age pretty good. Uh, my dad coached during integration prior to and then did integration, so he had a very unique perspective on coaching an all-white team and then not long after that, a mostly black team. So uh, I have to give my parents credit. Um, uh, we were raised in a, in a very Christian home, and we were, we were told and, and taught to make sure that you looked at everyone with, and treated everyone with dignity and respect. And it didn't matter what color they were. And I uh, never heard in our, in our home uh, 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 racial-type words that were divisive. So I have to give my family a lot of credit in, 
they made sure that we that's and I feel like that has been a reason that uh, that I've had uh, great relationships. Uh, and when I went to Southern Miss, obviously uh, there weren't a lot of guys <laughs> like Coach Brent just said. There weren't a lot of guys that looked like me on the team. And uh, but those guys were brothers, and and you just learn to see things in a different perspective. And uh, it's an exciting time, certainly for our state. Now, Landon, I know you didn't grow grow up there, nearby Louisiana, but um, what were your emotions? Uh, with the state flag of Mississippi? Well, I think that, you know, first and more, foremost, I think that it's taking steps towards unity, um, you know, not only for the state of Mississippi, but, you know, throughout the nation, you know, all the stuff that's going on in the world. So, you know, when, you know, all the coaches and, you know, our blood directors came together last week, I thought that was a great idea to, you know, go down there and, you know, show support for one another. But, you know, with the flag coming down, I think that, you know, that's also will help with recruiting, uh, with you know different type of barriers that we were faced with, but I think it's a great idea, and I'm I'm supporting 100. percent Ben, coming from California, I mean you've coached all over the country, the Northeast, out West, um, but I'm curious when when you came to Mississippi, and this issue maybe wasn't at the forefront, but it was still sort of hanging out there. Uh, what was your sort of first introduction to this issue of this state flag? First of all, I'm thrilled that it's finally changed. It was long overdue, needed to be done. It's great for the state moving forward in so many fronts. I remember being really bothered by it. I was sitting here in downtown Starkville at Mugshots and across the street from the county courthouse, we have recruits at Mugshots and I'm looking at the Confederate flag. I thought I was in a Twilight Zone episode. I mean, it's like, what, what is this? It really, and I really expressed that to a lot of people. And uh, so I was just so thrilled that this was finally changed. You know, we have the highest percentage of, uh, you know, African-Americans living in any state in the country here in Mississippi. 40% of the state is black. And I mean, I'm so happy for all of them, uh, number one. And it's, like I said, so long overdue. It's incredibly important. Uh, And, you know, I, I agree with Kermit that it doesn't really represent uh, the vast majority of the people here in Mississippi. People here, I've lived all over, just as you said. People here are so nice. They are so loving. The thing that my wife and I love so much about Mississippi is such a Christian culture. And I think that losing the Confederate part of the flag and getting a new flags can help the perception from the outside. Because the perception of Mississippi from the outside is far different than the reality of being here in Mississippi, in my viewpoint. And so I'm thrilled. I think it's going to help economics. And I'm especially happy for our players because, you know, it's it's a sign of oppression. It's a sign of uh, racism and it needed to be gone. And thank God it is. So I want to go around our group here. Um, Kermit, I'll start with you because there's a picture where you happen to be at the time standing in front of the podium at the State House. Uh, you know, rarely do we see in any kind of college athletics where literally everyone comes together from various institutions, all levels. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there were 46 total uh, athletic representatives from the various schools in the state of Mississippi converging on the state house as a show of unity to influence uh, the state representatives in the house and the Senate and ultimately the governor to say, look, this needs to happen. If we can go around our group here about what that day was like to see that show of unity, that empowerment that you all felt in actually literally seeing change. It was one of the most gratifying things that I've ever done in coaching. All the guys on this screen have won a lot of games and that championships and you know to be there and, and any one of these coaches could have been out there and, and delivered that message. But as a Mississippian, uh, it was it was a great feeling, and uh, you know I get we got a chance to go visit with the Speaker of the House, Lieutenant Governor, and then we were talking to different you know people from the House, you know state senators, and and, and talking to them about their vote, and so it was it, it gives you a, a better understanding of the political nature that sometimes we get away from, uh, but to see it happen because we didn't want it to go to a referendum, we needed to have change now. It, it was a great day for. For all of us, I know I called my dad coming home and he felt so proud that it was so long overdue that that he was still living. He's 84 and finally saw the flag change. I wasn't able to make it. I'm still up in Detroit, but just seeing the pictures and seeing um, 
all of the coaches and all of the staff and everybody together uh, standing there and, and just presenting such a powerful front was, was you know, heartfelt with me. You know, I, I was part of a um, – we, we signed a petition to get this started a while ago, and it's something that I had been talking about for years. Um, so to see it come to fruition right in front of my eyes, man, was, was unbelievable. Uh, it, it's just something that – I just felt so passionate about, and um, a lot of times I'm I'm not a politician, and I really don't get into politics. I vote, that's about it. But I, I think now um, I'm learn I'm using this as a teaching tool for my players, teaching them that you know they have to be change agents. They have to understand um, we have a responsibility to impact you know our our society, and, and this is what it's all about. And, and we need our you know we need our our brother, our white coaches, and everybody to help us. We need allies. We can't do this alone. And that's what's so great about it to me. I just felt like it was a great, great honor to be involved. And I, I was just incredibly excited to see all of our coaches come together. There was no difference in Coach Howe and Coach Davis and Coach Brent, myself, and everybody was unified. And, and also since, uh, and Coach Davis just mentioned this and referenced it, I sensed a great amount of unity among our legislators. We have to give them credit. They, they were some of those guys were under tremendous pressure. Um, and another thing that's a very, uh, very much a positive, I kind of felt like that after it happened, I was going to catch maybe a lot of flack from a certain element of people. And it hasn't happened. I, I cannot tell you how many people, black, white, and otherwise, have reached out and said, Coach, thank you so much for what you did representing South Mississippi and our University of Southern Mississippi. Y'all did the right thing. And um, I, I've seen it, it be, which it should be, the flag was divisive, but I've seen a great unity of purpose uh, with the change. We shouldn't have had to be dealing with this in the year 2020, but we did, um, and it needed to be changed. And it, it's just it's just a great honor to be a part of it. You know what, like, like the coaches have, have talked about, I just didn't, didn't know if, uh, during my career, during my lifetime, that I would actually see uh, the, the flag change. So just to be able to be a part of that group, uh, to be able to look around and see the unity in the room, uh, you know, not not looking at skin color, whether black, brown, white, you, you know, whatever, uh, just a great feeling to look at a, a bunch of young men and young women that, that came together uh, for, for one cause and everybody working on the, on the, on the, on the same page. Um, I think that, you know, it came down pretty fast and they did a good job of, you know, having some urgency as making that change. So it's, it shows the seriousness of the state of Mississippi. And like I said, I support it. I was happy about it. And I think that it's beneficial for everybody. You know, we had two coaches represent us in terms of speaking. Nikki McCray, our women's coach, and Kermit Davis. Uh, and I thought, Kermit, you did a phenomenal job. I thought Kermit was really spot on and his comments representing all of us. He, he did an outstanding job. And I thought Nikki did a great job too. They were both really good with every camera in Mississippi pointed right at them. I thought they were outstanding and really represented our feelings so well as a body of coaches. I'm just thrilled again for everybody. I think it's gonna really you know, help all the state's universities. I think it's gonna help our state uh, I think this is a great place. I love Mississippi. You know, I'm a California guy, as you mentioned. Uh, we have really enjoyed living here. Love the people. You know, black, white, everybody is phenomenal. Uh, and it's just a special place to be. And I think that uh, as, as the outside world gets to know Mississippi better, I think there's going to be, uh, you know, great things come from this because this was an important step in my mind. It was symbolism that needed to be changed and was changed. You know, from an athletic standpoint, the SEC, the NCAA, both saying we're not going to host championships unless it gets changed. We've seen that, you know, laws in North Carolina, Indiana, obviously the flag was flying uh, above the state capitol in Columbia, South Carolina, that changed so they could host things. But the student athlete aspect of this, the feeling of, you know what, I can say what I, you know, I, that, that I'm passionate about, that I can get out there. There's not going to be any kind of reprisal. I can be who I am, uh, and my coaches are going to back me. We clearly are in a different era with that right now where student-athletes are feeling empowered. Ben, I'll start with you about 
you know, the empowerment of the student athlete that we're seeing here in the spring slash summer of 2020. We had a great march here in Starkville, Mississippi that our players participated in along with our coaches about three weeks ago that was phenomenal. And uh, uh, I was really proud of our guys. It, you know, this kind of reminds me of when I was a kid. It's the last time I can really remember where, where uh, students and athletes were really involved in important issues outside of, I want to have a nice BMW, I want to have a nice life, I want to make it the NBA. There's more to life than just that. And you're seeing our players really recognize, uh, you know, what's going on in this country and that they have a voice, that they are very important because they are in the limelight. I mean, you know, sports, athletics, and you saw it really play a role this, this past week here in Mississippi where it was really important uh, to people that made the decisions that we didn't lose the ability to host championships in basketball and baseball and volleyball in all the different sports. It was a big deal that, uh, uh, you know, we, we were able to continue to represent and hold championships in the state. And I think it did play a role in helping make that decision. How big a one it doesn't really matter. It's just important. It played some role in my heart, but our players are definitely empowered. And I, I I'm really excited about that, that they're, taking more of an interest in what's going on in the world and somehow trying to be involved in it and make a difference. These are our future leaders. The young men we have in our programs right now and the young women that are in the programs are the future leaders of this country. So it's great that they are engaged, they want to be engaged, and they're making a difference. I think that it's very important, the most important thing, um, you know, but, you know, SEC to start, you know, for the Mississippi native kids, they actually get to have the opportunity to play in front of their family and friends closer to home when they start to, you know, have championships down here. And I also think that it helped with our recruiting at this level, just because, you know, a lot of um, parents, they might have been hesitant about, you know, bringing, letting their kids fly down from Baltimore or New York to Mississippi. But I think that it's showing change and like the unity and, you know, the steps it's making in Mississippi to, you know, head in the right direction. You know, I think it's very important for the, for the kids to understand that they have some say-so, they have some input. Uh, you know, in my neighborhood, where I'm from, every day we, we sit outside and, and, and I talk to these guys, whether they go to Ole Miss or whether they go to Mississippi State uh, or, or wherever, Southern Miss. I remember back in 1998 when I went to, uh, to Ole Miss with three, three kids from Provine High School right out of, out of the hood, uh, in the, in which they were the Provine Posse at the time. And it, it wasn't the, the most appealing thing to do. And, you know, the kids took so much flack from doing it. Why do you want to go there? Why do you want to play for a place that has a flag? But, you know, you have, you have to talk to them. You have to be open with them. And now to see that 20, 25 years uh, uh, down the road and, and now that they have a voice, uh, I think it's important for them because, you know, on, on Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, they're the one who's running the football or uh, getting a big rebound and everybody cheering for them. And then they – you know, the thing that they come to me with is why on Sunday is different. And I, I think that's something that's, that's, that's talked about in, in the place of that, uh, from the people that where I'm from. There, there's just so much more to coaching than X's and O's. And, and, and a coach that doesn't understand that or a person that doesn't understand that, in my opinion, is not a coach. And then obviously at the Division One level, we're at, we're at a much higher platform. And it's, it's our responsibility and duty and our players. And I think if they see – us take the right stand. We haven't had our players on campus, as you and I discussed, or we all discussed before the, the panel began, but it's, it's the same thing. We've been involved. We've had uh, uh, rallies, uh, uh, marches, and, and so forth, and obviously had the, the great honor of being in Jackson last week. So there's just more to coaching basketball, or really any sport for that matter, than the X's and O's. And social justice is obviously right up there top. That's what the Lord wants us to do. We all bleed red when it comes down to it. Uh, it, and, and when our time is called and, and we have to stand in front of the Lord, it's, it's going to be that. How do we treat our fellow man? And so it, it's an exciting time. And I, I know our players are in power. They're, they're excited. It makes them feel better. Like Wayne said, they didn't, have, they didn't feel good just on game nights when everybody's patting the shoulder. Now they can feel a sense of belonging uh, because we don't have the flag of oppression over us. Yeah, I think the empowerment of our athletes goes, it dates back to Muhammad Ali and uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I think with the latest of, of Colin Kaepernick bringing so much attention to social injustice, 
it just opened everybody's eyes to understand that you guys do have a voice. You know, you guys aren't just basketball players and football players. That's what you do. It's not who you are. And my father always made that a point when he talked to me and he was raising me. You know, basketball is what you do. Never let it be who you are. Because one day that ball is going to stop bouncing and you have to be able to, you know, function in society and be a viable source in society. And I think, you know, these guys taking a stance and understanding that, you know, there's power in athletics, that there, there's power in what you do and you can make change uh, because of what you do, you know, and, and, and the character that you possess. Uh, and a lot of these guys, you don't get to see, you know, under that helmet, you know, after the, the Sundays and they don't get to see our guys out of the uniforms participating in marches and leading, uh, you know, their peers to, to make social change. And it's a, it's a great time in life where we get these young guys who we thought were so preoccupied with video games and cell phones, you know, they, they actually get it. And, and I, that's what I'm so proud about and happy about that they understand. Uh, a lot of times we talk to our kids, you know, I have kids that are younger that I talk to and they're on their phone. And you don't think they get it, but now seeing the, the protest and the, the, articul the articulate kids that are getting out speaking and, and making a difference, man, it just makes you feel good inside. And, you know, change in Mississippi has changed everywhere. Yeah, and, and I, I totally um, agree with Lindsay. I don't think we've ever had a younger generation more informed, smarter. Think about how much more exposed they are than we all were. And I know I'm, I'm 60 years old, you know, because of social media that they, they see it day in and day out. You know, I, I love that. I think it's made me, it'll make us all better listeners because we know our players do have a platform that really matters. And, and I remember when Muhammad Ali took the stance and, and that was a strong stance because it wasn't a very popular stance, you know, and he was the, the greatest athlete uh, in the world. So it, it makes you feel really good. And, and the last thing I'll say, Andy, what, you know, in my lifetime, the biggest thing that has made me feel good about our young people, young generation is the marches and to see young white America unite with young black America. And to me, that that's a good feeling. We're not where we need to be, but that is a great, great start that they're, they're together. And so, you know, our future generations are going to take this and, and, and I think go forward in a great way. Well, first of all, I appreciate all of you uh, and everything that you've done, continue to do uh, in this crazy time of 2020. It was so wonderful to have some good news. Uh, and all of you uh, help represent positive change in the state of Mississippi. I wish you all well, stay safe, and hopefully we're going to be talking hoops here in a few months. Appreciate it.